Hello everybody, Mike with Spray Jones coming to you with another video. Sometimes you can't always just use closed cell spray foam. You need to use a pore foam and this is a perfect example of that. Here we have parapet wall on top of a roof and the architect wants to make sure that the hollow steel 4x4 columns are insulated and then the tracking is insulated. So this is a multi-step process and we were able to come in and provide the solution for this. So the first step is getting up on the rooftop with my guys and we took a brand new mag drill that we had bought at the time, uh, which you see here in the video, and we had to drill all our own holes. So the HSS is sitting on top of the roof. The roof is going to be conventionally insulated with BUR, built up roofing. But the architect's concerned that where the parapet wall is, that they can't get the insulation out to it and they don't want to have condensation on the inside of the building. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill each of these four by four uh, hollow square tubes with closed cell uh, two pound density pore foam. Now pore foam is the correct uh, solution for this because we need it to go all the way down to the bottom and then rise up, I don't know, two, three, these, these things are four feet tall. So we're gonna get them to rise up. So we're drilling here a three quarter inch diameter hole. Now this is critical to have the right tools to do this kind of work with. Uh, if you're trying to do this with a drill bit and a hand drill, you're gonna be tired after about four holes. This is the safe and effective way to do this. Plus there needs to be plenty of ventilation that as the spray foam is rising, it acts like a piston head. It actually pushes the air up and out of the HSS. So this has enough gap where they welded it that the air can escape. But normally we'd have to be drilling like two holes, one for air to escape and one to put the foam in. Otherwise, you're fighting against yourself uh, to try and get spray foam in because the air pressure won't allow it. Here he's just going down the wall. We had a lot of lineal feet to do on two different levels. So we're gonna go out and pre-drill all of the holes uh, for the spray foam to get into. And having a non-corded uh, drill, mag drill, is, is absolutely critical. This thing can go in a lift, um, it can go all around the building. In fact, when we brought it to site, uh, the guys were just marveling at this thing. This was a relatively, this is a 2018 project that we did this in, but uh, no, 2017, I'm mistaken, 2017 project. So this drill had been on the market for about six or eight months, but uh, seeing that it was M18 powered was just amazing to them. So we're drilling out all the holes. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch our rig over to a closed cell, two pound density pour foam. And we're gonna use the same equipment. We're gonna use the same air purge gun, but we have a nozzle on the end of the air purge gun and that's gonna allow us to inject into these columns. So step one is going around like you're seeing here now and injecting the foam down in. Now this is a bit of a trial and error in the beginning. Uh, you're gonna have underfills and overfills. So what you're trying to do, since we don't have a shot timer or a volumetric timer that would turn the gun on and off based on the settings that we dial in, it's just a simple low tech count, 1,000 and 1,000 and 2,000 and three. See how much foam you're putting into the system. Now, people ask me all the time, can you inject foam over here and over there and underneath this and underneath that? And the answer is yes, you can to some degree, but you see that he's got a little stinger hose on the end here to try and help get um, the foam in. Oh, after a while, we got rid of it because it was constantly getting plugged up. But when you have an extension hose on the end of your gun, uh, eventually you're gonna build enough head pressure with the foam that you'll just blow, you'll just blow that little line right off the end of the gun and you'll have a heck of a mess all over the place. Plus it, it wants to plug up and you, you're not effectively purging out the foam out of the gun. So here you can see that he's done a shot, he's done an injection, he's done a second top up injection. He's just setting up his time to know exactly how long uh, he's gonna need to be pulling the trigger. And then once he starts to see the foam coming up and out of the hole, then he's good to go. So now he's dialed in now he's seeing how things work and we've ditched the stinger hose for direct injection. Now what we do is we work a pattern because you're not gonna do it all, all at once. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a couple, two or three holes and then eventually come back to the first one. This is a, like a 40 second pour foam. So it takes just under a minute for it to reach its full rise. But being that you're in a confined space uh, once it starts to rise, it can pick up quite a bit of speed. So you don't want to overfill it because if you overfill it a lot, 
the pressure inside the tube is going to cause the foam to come pushing out and it's going to rock it out of that hole like a jet stream and we've had that happen before and you're grabbing a five gallon bucket and trying to hold it up there and catch it all so the idea here is to inject enough and here he's just checking to see if anything's leaking out on the other side if he's making a mess on the outside of the building because uh, if there's a gap in any of the welds or any of the seams for drainage uh, that's where the foam's going to come out and you'll see that in a little while here but we're going to inject foam in and build up just enough that it reaches to the top of the hole and uh, not come spurting out and making a huge gigantic puking mess. So it takes a little bit of patience, takes a little bit of precision, but that's what you hire us for. Uh, we've done HSS fill on a number of buildings because otherwise these are cold condensing points uh, coming either through the wall assembly or on the roof. Now this is purely a roof issue. They're not concerned about a cold parapet other than the connection point at the roof. So this is to make sure that there's some foam in the in the column. Now you might ask, why are you filling the whole thing up? Why not just put an injection, mic it up three, four, five inches down at the bottom and you'd be good to go. The answer is the architect gets the final say. I mean, you give them an option and say, look, we can inject a little bit down at the bottom and you're seeing it squish out at the bottom there. But they sit there and say, nah, you know, fill the thing up. Then we know we got it all the way. Then we got more than enough. And I. I think it's a sensible answer because it's not drastically huge more amounts of material. We just hold the trigger on a little bit longer and it goes up to the top like you're seeing here. And that's about perfect, you know, squishing out, starting to terminate, starting to, to gel over and become thick. You just take a knife, you can knock that off in five minutes time and you're good to go. And then to complete the structure, what we're doing is we're going around and we're spraying the tracking. So uh, the columns are now filled right that are making up the parapet and then they've done a steel stud tracking they've done uh two by eight i think it is steel studs and then they were going to put their dense glass on the outside and on the inside when we're done but this is completing the roof insulation so the roofing guys have a nice straight edge of dense glass to bring their roofing materials up to and lap to and then what we're doing is we're putting in 100 millimeters or four inches of closed cell wall type by BSF into the tracking. So we're gonna build this up in two layers. He's gonna walk down uh, the building one way and then put on a first pass of two inch and then he'll put on a second pass. It's important to stick to your passes and that's what the finished product looks like. So now they've got full continuity insulation inside the HSS columns, uh, spray foam all around the columns and in the tracking and right to the outer edge of the entire assembly They've got the full value. So You know a lot of times they'll ask us. Can you do this just with spray foam? The answer is no We can't inject foam into the column with spray foam because spray foam wouldn't flow to the bottom You'd have gaps and voids in it fairly heavily You need to do it with a liquid pour foam and then switch out so it's right product right application and HSS is perfect for getting foam. We've done 12 by 12 HSS and even larger columns where they're inside the building and be, would be otherwise compromised thermally with having no insulation in them. So this is what the finished product looks like. Got to have enough hose when you're working on buildings like this. We're on third story here, second story and third story. Uh, Got to have enough hose to get all the way up to the top and then move around and have enough uh, ability to work. So if you like content like this, leave a comment, share, like, subscribe to the channel, stick around. I'll be educating more on what we're doing on future projects as we go along throughout the summer. And uh, you're going to get to see some real neat projects that we're working on this year, uh, commercially and residentially. So stick around. We'll see you soon.